infrastructure, or it's, hey, you should know so-and-so. So I think it's a little more of a networking and less of a direct, how do you get money through this um, <laughs> equation. All the way there. I had a question just out of curiosity. So we're probably aware that people on the coasts have certain ethics and views. I'm curious, more in the middle of the country, are there different forms of giving back that appeal more to customers in the other territories? It's a great question. Repeat. Repeat. Oh, sorry. So there, it's, this, is a, this is a blue red state question a little bit. It's a little bit coastal versus interior. Do you want to give back and involved in different ways? I would say the way that we approach that question is twofold because we do have a lot of clients who have audiences across the spectrum. The first is there is no question that some social issue topics are more volatile than others. Uh, you know, I mean, there are some that are going to resonate in certain kinds of corporations. I'm not going to have any problem getting tech companies to, to take them on, but it's, you know, I was with the CEO of Land O'Lakes last week. That's a very different audience, to your point, right? So those are companies that stereotypically, or funders who are gonna be more, have more of an appetite for after-school programs, or things that are just a little less divisive. So that's kind of the first way we approach it. The second way is, if you are in an issue, and my God, some of them that I didn't used to think were controversial getting there now. Um, I do think there is a way to slice and dice most issues in a way that's more powerful. I mean, look, I have a client in Montana, we still talk about the environment. We talk about it more from somewhere you're gonna wanna hunt and fish later to, you know, you're gonna drive a Prius. But I do think by getting back to people's kind of core and why you care about whatever issue you care about, there is more commonality than that. Now, I'm not gonna say that I think immigration or abortion or a few things are a safe space at the moment, but you can usually find more gray um, than you would expect. And most companies are gonna have to bridge those gaps. I mean, yeah. despite our stereotypes of geography, you're gonna have to be more thoughtful. And, you know, this is another um, point of practice that we work on with our CEO clients a lot, is separating your personal and your professional. But you can talk about the same issue differently in different environments, uh, while remembering that the mic is always hot. Another question. Last one. Last, last one for now. Hello, my name is Alyssa. I was wondering of your client base, um, how many of them would prefer to do these programs in-house versus work with another organization, nonprofit or startup to accomplish their goals? That's a really important question. So her question was how many of our clients or the folks I work with would rather do in-house programming versus work with a partner? There's no question that some people have a bias towards one or the other. They want to own their staff or they want to hand it off and be efficient. However, I think most thinking people in this space, nine times out of 10, you have to let the issue lead you. And what I mean by that is sometimes they're great partners and you just need to have them tweak their work a little to be your implementing partner. Other times you're like, okay, we gotta go make this up because there isn't anyone out there doing the need that we see. Um, and one, to take that a step further, one illustrative example I give, because our clients oftentimes tend to have profile, whether they're individuals or corporations in terms of one of the assets they bring to the table, often one of the biggest things they can bring to the table is convening. Because most social issues are very fragmented, most organizations working on them are under-resourced, overworked, you know, they don't have time to raise their heads above water. So a lot of times what we end up having our clients do is bring everyone together, whether it's to share resources or best practices, or come up with kind of a shared plan. Brent referenced the um, SDGs now, which were originally the MDGs. Back when I first worked on them a million years ago, we were creating them at the UN. Truthfully, it was, how do we create a shared impact plan? It wasn't even intended to be what it's become today, which is its own living, breathing entity. It was, we've got all these people working on these issues in every corner of the world, how do we work towards them together, operating under the philosophy that if there's some coordination and some communication, the outcomes are gonna become greater than us each working in 200 silos. So I think that there is a lot of um, variance in the answer to that question. Tara is the president of the Goldhurst Foundation. Prior to 
Justice World Chair Bridge the World in Marketing, Media, and Philanthropy as the founding COO of Good and a Social Strategic Advisor. So I'm going to use both mics. Uh, so I run the Goldner's Foundation, which is a private family foundation here in Los Angeles. We support social innovation in LA. And this is actually the first time that I've talked about the work that we do in this way. So this is a work in progress. Uh, what we're calling this, this is a work in progress. I used to have Fran Siegel, whom some of you may know, who is now running the Ford Foundation's Impact Alliance, Impact Investing Alliance. I used to have her on my investment committee. And we talked about the nuances of the term impact investing. And uh, I've just decided to go with investing with purpose to make it really easy and very flexible and nimble for, for all of us involved. So, uh, and I also want to say, I think that this is a really interesting discussion <coughs> in that Brent helped uh, really uh, define some of the terms out there and some of what we're trying to address, and Matthew brought some of these to life. And what I'm doing with you today is I'm going to take you through the journey that I'm currently on with the foundation and how we are testing. Uh, so first I want to frame the discussion with a few principles that we keep in mind and these principles are also a little bit of a caveat of the, the flexibility with which we approach our work. So I'm borrowing from Stephen Covey, begin with the end in mind. And this is really about what is it that you are trying to achieve and then how would, it, would a funder like I try to match your needs. And so if, when we talk about financial terms, we have a number of tools at our disposal and, and foundations do and other funders do. Uh, and these include grants and loans, investments, and then contracts fee for service or other, in, other types of in-kind work. So to kind of tease out grants and how we can talk about beginning with the end in mind, <clears throat> excuse me, it's, we have a number of different tools for grants. We can make grants to for profit. So we can do this via something called expenditure responsibility or something called fiscal sponsorship. And um, some of these can be a little controversial. I was actually told by a philanthropic uh, colleague in an open forum that what, what one thing we had done um, with making a grant to a for-profit was illegal, and it actually was not illegal, but it's just not a common practice. Another thing we do with grants is we use grants to match or make challenge grants, so we incentivize and encourage other people to get involved. So we might issue a match grant. When we talk with the person to whom we're going to give the grant and say, how can we best leverage our funds to help you reach a broader audience and help you bring more funds into, into the fold. So we might do a one-to-one -one dollar match up to a certain amount and we might say, you need to raise $50,000, $25,000, $100,000, and then that releases our funds. And I, I will also say the, the spectrum, we're also trying to look at grants and our investments and all of our financial resources similarly and try to bring them together in, in one, one um, cohesive strategy. So another thing is loans. There was a, um, an organization here at Lacey that I'll talk about a little bit later, Isidore Recycling, and we provided uh, Kabira Stokes, who started Isidore Recycling, it was a B Corp, and you, know, you might remember her, and, uh, and Kabira actually had some issues um, that I'm sure she, she or others would be happy to share with B Corps, and I'm a big fan of B Corps as well, but uh, B Corp, but she had some issues with finding the right funders that to, to understand what she was doing in this interesting financial structure. So we've given some loans, uh, we also make investments, and this is a this is typically from a foundation's perspective a very different side of the house. It's usually a different staff. Um, we because we're a very small foundation, have a very small staff. I run our investment committee and work with our five uh, volunteer investment professionals from outside who form our investment committee. I also work with our wealth advisor and our board. Uh, so I have this opportunity to look across the board at all of our financial assets, but the investments are really. Um, really made to generate the returns that will then enable us to do the grant making. That's how most foundations really are run. Uh, and then, then on, on the last point, in financial assets, we can also provide contracts. So we could contract with a business, uh, whether it's whether we're the first client in to a particular business to prove a concept. Or we could provide a grant um, or a contract to a government entity to hire that startup. Or we can work with a grantee and say, we've given you grant dollars, we're also interested in the startup and potentially figuring out a way to launch this startup in a way that would be of mutual benefit to both of you. So a lot of testing and experimentation. Um, and the next, so function over form is basically, uh, if, with that begin with the end of the mind, what, what are your needs and how might you be able to achieve that? The other thing is the golden rule, and I'm just a big fan of the golden rule, period, but especially when it comes to the funding-funder relationship, 
I think it's really important to be very direct and respectful and clear about expectations. So I will tell people straight up, we're not going to fund you. I don't want you to waste your time and I don't want you to waste my time. And I, I do that because I came from a fundraising background and I didn't, it was hard to put someone on my warm list and realize they're not on my warm list. I would just rather know right up front. We're not going to get married. You know, this is, this is like better to know up front. Um, and then I also believe in, um, I want to be the funder that I wish I had been able to find. When I first moved to Los Angeles, I started an education reform network that had a lot of promise, but I needed a very small amount of money. I needed like a laptop and someone to help me with what was my Yahoo groups then. I mean, that's how long ago it was. And I didn't fit into a traditional world. I wasn't, I wasn't a 501c3. I wasn't, a, there was no B for it. That, or maybe there was, it was just very early on. And um, I was a sole operator. I was deriving, the, uh, deriving income from um, events and from job postings on my Yahoo groups, but no one could really place me in the world. So I really want to, I strive to, I strive to remember what I was, what I was facing. And I strive to think about how can we kind of extend a hand to people who have a great idea who might be promising in a particular endeavor. And then the last is that I've heard a lot of people say, oh, that's crazy. And I feel like when I hear that's crazy, I'm on the right track. So I think a lot of you are probably in the situation that people think your ideas might be crazy or your model might be crazy. And I just want to remind you there's the quotation about that the day before something becomes a breakthrough, it's a crazy idea. So just, just remember that. And when I've, I've been working on a compensation plan for my foundation, and in working with our legal counsel, she said, Tara, you guys are unlike 99% of your peers, so it's really hard to place you. And I said, yeah, and I think people think that we're a little bit crazy sometimes, but we use technology to do our grants, we use 